Here we are. Here we are once again. Beautiful and another sunny day. Hey, get, uh, just another knockout, gorgeous sunny day. Yeah. Um, Milk has 17. Yeah, number 17, which is all good. Yeah. And you're wearing one of my favorites here. Yeah. Oh, this, is that a new pin? Uh, this is the pin I can never find because oh. it gets lost in the sweater. I got this yeah. on Etsy. Um, I forget the store name, but I can link it. It's just a nice little simple pin. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but this is, uh, I'll, I'll stand up. It goes on forever. Yeah, you can't even see it. But this is uh, the Belfast coat uh, pattern on a Brooklyn tweed that I made with our first yarn yeah. that we ever spun. It's it's just so much fun to be able to say you made the yarn, you yep. dyed it. And I wore yeah. my sweater that I had done with the same at um, uh, the Russell Garden Center oh, great. on Sunday. And I got a lot of comments and I said, yeah, I get to say that I yeah. made the yarn and dyed it and knit it. It is so dang cool. And yeah. I just think I wanted bright colors. So it was this or my red sweater and I wore the red one last week. So Yeah. And you, you look great in that color and that's one of your favorite colors. <laughs> I do love it. I am wearing a sweater wear? that my friend Ann Crory knit and it's um it's got a nice little design at the bottom that matches and on the, the sleeves and on the sleeves and Anne is just an amazing knitter and she's one of these knitters that never really works with a pattern mm -hmm. or she gets inspired by a pattern and then then she just often does it I love goes off this and does it. sort of like lace detail yeah on the increases. yeah with the yarn over yeah and, yep. and, yeah great That's I have a, I have a couple of sweaters from Anne and I really appreciate it Anyway, that's what that's what I'm wearing. Good. Um, big day yesterday. Yeah, you went down to uh, uh, Wayland, Massachusetts. I was in Wayland, Massachusetts, and um, it was at the Russell Garden Center. Mm -hmm. We had done it in January, and then this was the second one. Peg Mallet runs just a fantastic fiber festival there, but um, I had gone down Saturday, and Friday night is when the big snowstorm came. Yeah, we got over uh -huh. a foot. It yeah. was wild, and it came down fast that, yes. that Saturday morning I went out to just see how the sheep were doing and yeah. I, I couldn't get over how fast it was accumulating I know I know we we have a very small driveway and so we it just we can't even get it plowed if we wanted to probably so we were out there shoveling Shove several times I imagine oh yeah yeah and it was it, you know we had a fun day of it I think if your attitude is right and you have yeah. nowhere to go well and it was pretty light snow uh, by the time we were out there, it started warming up a yeah, little bit, yeah. and it was so much snow that you couldn't... Normally, the way we shovel is, you know, we make a path down the center, and then we sort of shove the snow until you get to the end, and then you can lift it up at right. the very end. Well, this snow, you couldn't shove it anywhere because it was so much. So not only that, you had to do two passes just oh, to boy. get one shovel yep, full because yep. it was a foot tall. So if you yeah. tried to go all the way down to the concrete or whatever, right. it just... Yeah, so it was a workout. So, but you uh, you made it out. You yeah, well, I I could not shovel my way out of the, my you driveway. You have a long driveway. So I was waiting for the guy to come plow, and he plows with a, a, an absolutely massive John Deere tractor. And I was like, if he doesn't get there, I'll have to drive down crack of dawn on Sunday. But he did get in there uh, uh, late Saturday afternoon, so I was able to get down to Boston uh, the night before. Uh, and stay with uh, good friends. And so I was able to get to Wayland at 7.30 in the morning to start setting up. Wow. Well, our system for, we're gonna have to revisit. We, we put these box frames together. Yeah, they're like the little metal grid crates. It, right. Little, you got little pieces. And once they... they're together, it's brilliant, but it takes a long time to put them and together. And they pack up so small. Yeah. But anyway, Wayland was fantastic. Great crowds, we were outside. I was outside. And um, some people were still in the greenhouse. Oh yes, that. yeah. The, okay. And and you just sort of, I, I knew I was going to be outside, but the sun would occasionally poke through, uh, which was a good thing. But it wasn't constant. So no, yeah. no. But it wasn't too bad. I, my guess is it was in the low 40s by the time. Okay. And it was probably 30, yeah, you've 31. Yeah, you a few hours south, and it's just right. It right. just makes a, and they, a, a good difference. They got some snow, but it was mostly rain. Oh, so, that's a yeah, one person came by and said that's the most snow they had ever gotten, and it's really rather depressing. But oh. what wasn't depressing is the the folks that came by the um, the booth. It, it, thank you all so much. There's so many people that were like, oh, we're watching the millcast, and that was a lot of fun. And it was a it was a great day at the market. Uh, lots and lots of people. Um, I had on one side of me a phenomenal uh, baker. I, I've got a little picture there of some of the stuff they make. And on the other side, two over, was someone with a, a, a rabbit, um, an Angora rabbit. And uh, it was all good. One person came by 
She had on a sweater that just kept going. It was a jacket all the way down, you know, to maybe three inches b wow. above the ground. Wow. I, I'm like, I can't get over how much time that took to knit. And another um, uh, folks that I've known well, they had knit um, out of my sheep's uh, wool a sweater, and it got finally got finished, and he came by to show it to me, and I was like, that is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. But um, great crowds, and um, had no problem driving down, and turned around, and it, it went till three, which is terrific, because then... You know, it takes about an hour to pack up, but I was I was home by a little after six o'clock. Well, thank you for yeah. uh, doing that festival. I got, oh, that was I, my pleasure. I had my day off on Sunday, and I got a text from you, which I was listening to my audiobook at the time, so it read the text to me, and it was really it, yeah, which is really kind of fun. But it, it was a a fan of the Millcast just stopped by with a grilled cheese sandwich, and I just started <laughs> cracking up. It made it's, me so happy to hear true. that. It's true. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, I had made a reference earlier that, uh, you know, I was I didn't get a chance to eat, and they had these amazing food trucks. Anyway, this woman came by and said, let me get you a cheese. And I said, can I pay for it? She said, no. I was like, oh, come on. Anyway, extremely kind. That's why we do great. the Millcast. So yeah, right. we'll Sneak I, peg some grilled cheeses. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was that was a great sandwich. Anyway, great time there, and thanks everybody who who came by the booth. It was a lot of fun. Oh, I would should say, um, metal metal fed no what help metal me? fed lamb metal fed lamb. It doesn't quite roll off my tongue. You we've shown you their fin. Uh, Rachel Haas was fin, yeah. yeah and Rachel Haas was in one of our earlier mill casts just last week actually. R yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, they were at the fiber festival, kind of around the corner in a greenhouse. They were they were cooking. Um, and uh, two different people came into the booth saying, look what I bought. And I was like, oh, excellent. You bought some of their fin, which is really, yep. it, it, it was fabulous. Yeah, it is really satisfying as a mill, but also as a vendor at yeah. these things to not only have our own yarn for sale, but to see people so excited about um, our, friend, our friends yeah. and customers' yeah. yarn that we processed in this very same mill. So yeah. we've got that was our good. fingers sort of stretching out in the fiber world, which yeah, is great. It was, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, there was a bunny there, but... Good segue. <laughs> yeah, random, we had a bunny here at the mill. We told you about this Angora we were processing. Yeah, but I'm, I'm itching my nose thinking about it. it just <laughs> This Angora, we think, had a dandruff, maybe a dandruff issue. We're not right. really sure. We're not, we're not bunny people, but uh, it was a, a tricky process. But anyways... I wasn't here this day, but I got a picture from, from yeah, Peggy. It, it, Anastasia holding Astro. The bunny. A Astro the bunny, who for three years, her owner, her owner, his owner, collected the fiber and then came with the, the fiber. And that's what we processed. Uh, we did like a 30% Astro the bunny and 70% yeah. uh, blended the, with wool. Yeah. And uh, But it, there's a funny photo of a live fiber animal in this yeah. very mill. Yeah. So we had to show it to you and yeah. we forgot to mention it last week. So yeah. here's Astro and Anastasia. Astro, yeah. <laughs> Um, Anyways. Yeah, so um, we, we continue to be busy in the mill. Yeah, we finished up with our Cormo yeah, Marathon. Yeah, massive Cormo Marathon. Yeah, so that's all heading to Wing and a Prayer, yeah. uh, Tammy, and you saw that last week, which we're, I think the yarn turned out yeah, lovely. Yeah, really lovely. Yeah, but now yeah. we're kind of... Um, catching up. Catching up on some other smaller jobs. The first of which we're really excited about is the North Country Cheviot. Yeah, um, you met Ginny Prince... Um, and one of our previous one of our episodes. previous yeah and she was dropping off her her fiber and this is just a glorious i'm going to show that right Oop. this is so this has now been scoured and picked and carded and pin drafted twice. twice and getting ready to spin and we actually have three different colorways from Ginny. this is the gray we'll have we'll have one that's almost black and then white um, and we'll do it all in the same weight, and that's going to be really and it, yummy. And her North, the North Country Chevy is sort of like Romney. You, yeah. I mean, probably all sheep, but we get yeah. a lot of these types of breeds here, and they really run the gamut yeah. on what you can get. And this is a really lovely right. um, her flock, excuse me, excuse me, flock yeah, of North yeah, Country flock. Chevy. Yeah, and we should also point out, so some uh, farms, they're raising great sheep, but they're not particularly interested in the wool. And in Ginny's case, she's really interested in um, raising uh, uh, border collies mm -hmm. to train them with sheep. Yep. And the North Country Cheviot is a really great breed to help dogs learn how to 
he handled them. But so, she does a fabulous job with the fiber as well. Right, and, and so we buy the fiber from her. So this will be a um, part of our farm fresh line. Yep. That um, it's going to be fabulous. And it'll have a lot of luster. Yeah. Um, but we've also been doing some making tracks. So you know, just to I think people are interested in sort of oh we should we should oh. stop that timer. Yeah, I'll go get the timer. You I will explain. tell you yeah. about uh, what making tracks kind of does for us. So. We had this really large cormo job that ran through the mill. So the first step was to get everything scoured, and then we got everything picked and everything carded and everything pin drafted. And then it took a while um, for us to spin it all. And meanwhile, you know, we still have some of the job going through the rest of our equipment. So uh, we needed once that cormo job was complete, we didn't have anything immediately following it just because of the way sort of everything timed out. So having some making tracks. Uh, which is our variegated line that we, we dye over um, a combed top, which is a much, much thicker roving, as I think we've explained in our making tracks episode. And then we just slot it in. Um, it just gets pin drafted once and then it gets spun. So we've done a couple rounds of that. Where right. We get it, it's the rest nice of to have that fiber. on standby. Right. So we've done three and we don't have them off of the bobbins, but I thought it might be fun just to show you what it looks like on the bobbins. So this is the creamsicle colorway on a bobbin. And then we've got our Firefly, which has uh, been a really popular yeah. one lately. We have a really fun sample we showed you a couple episodes ago uh, of a little baby hat that Maeve likes to wear. This and, is one of our newer lines. Yeah, and I loved how this looked on the bobbin. And this is what's so fun, you guys, about making the making tracks is that it, like, as it fills up a bobbin, you really see that color yeah. change, um, especially on the singles, but on the ply as well. And here you see, uh, this is, uh, what are we calling this, Into the in the forest, I think? Forest floor? Forest floor, yes. Forest floor. So you got that um, really nice burst of orange and then some greens and mossy colors. And this, you can see, uh, we <laughs> you, got a little, <laughs> little carried away on this spin run. So there's a little bit that went underneath the bobbin, but that's okay. We're just going to plop it off right. and then... But it, it, it's a clear demonstration. There's only so much you can put on. And what, yep. what would you say? You're, you're, you're north of a pound. Oh, this is definitely a pound and a half or more, All I right. would say. Okay. Yeah, so this will be about, I don't know, six, six seven skeins mm -hmm. worth on here mm -hmm. when we take it off. So the next step is to get skein wound, and then, uh, yeah, it'll probably be hitting our shelves pretty soon. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and so we also uh, had a question, not necessarily on our mill cast comments, but we've gotten this question from folks a couple times mm -hmm. that we wanted to just take a second to go over. Worsted versus woolen. woolen. I think... Right. A lot of folks like call you know we're a wool mill, but we are not a woolen mill. Correct. We're we're a wool mill because we deal with wool. Mm -hmm. We don't do 100% alpaca. We don't do 100% uh, llama. We are a wool mill, yep. but our process is different than a woolen mill. Yep. So woolen is the type of processing where you're just carding the fiber. It comes off of the carter in what's called pencil roving. Um, I think Green Mountain Spinnery has a video that shows how it works, and this is how I learned about it. But basically there's these leather straps that take that bat that, so it's basically on the end of the carter, you're getting a, a thin web that could be made into batting, or if you're us, you're sort of blowing it one direction and it's and turned into a carded is... roving. But a woolen mill will take it into pencil roving. So they're cutting that web with little uh, leather Leather's bands, and then it's getting wound onto some bobbins. So it's really thin, it's very fragile, and the fibers are going every which way. And then they're spinning that without drafting it. So right. drafting or pulling apart that fiber. And it leads to a yarn with the characteristic of being a little bit uh, warmer because you can trap, it's a little It's loftier. airier, it's fluffier because it, the the fibers have come off going this way and that way. Yep, they're not in, in that alignment. thin little pencil, um, thin roving. So it is. it tends to be warmer. I think people use it for like outerwear a lot of times because it, it does have insulating qualities. Um, but the downside, I would say, is it can be a little bit scratchier and it's not as, um, it doesn't look as lustrous. You don't get the light reflecting off it in a similar way as what we'll describe in the worsted um, method of processing. And uh, so, so we are neither worsted nor woolen, we're semi-worsted. I would say our yarn looks worsted. We, and this is worsted because we are actually purchasing yeah. combed top right so rather than a carter uh this fiber has been combed so that's a very large piece of equipment 
that basically gets all the fibers going in exactly the same direction rather than the carter, which they're still going this right. way. But um, when we get, when, once the, the wool has come off our carter into roving, we then pin draft it twice. And that pin drafting is mimicking what the big machines that do commercial comb top. And so that pin drafter is taking s usually six, scan, st six um, strands of the roving, six all going in at once, and the combs are going up and down, and it's, it's basically getting those fibers to line up. So they had been like this, and then they get like this. And we yeah. pin draft twice to really try to line it up so that they're lying, the fibers are lying side by side. It also is also to ensure that you know, this two feet weighs the same as the next two feet. But it's, it's also really about lining up those fibers so that when it's being spun, you're spinning those lined up fibers so you have a flatter, what I would call more kind of a finished look to the mm -hmm. to the final fiber and or final yarn. Yeah, exactly. And so, whereas in um, woolen spun, you're just taking that pencil roving, and my understanding is you're simply twisting it, and so you're controlling the the sort of thickness of your finished yarn by how many uh, how many singles you're putting together. Right. Whereas for our process, we're using something called drafting, which is pulling apart fibers. If you just take some roving, I'll show you right here. This is drafting. So this is still, if we were to just spin this as it is, like, you know, that it, thick. it would look like super, super bulky, right? right? So there's still even a lot of drafting to be done from here. So our machines, because the rollers are going at different speeds, they're gonna be pulling that fiber and then, and then putting the twist into it. And for us, this method is really nice because it allows us not only to make yarn that has you know, more of a worsted characteristic, which again, you get a lot of that luster, that shine because of the alignment and the way that the light will reflect off of it, but you also can control for various different thicknesses because we can speed up or slow down our rollers to achieve a different amount right. of draft. So, right, exactly. That's the key. You can have uh, it drafting relatively quickly so it's staying fat or it's slowing down and it's pulling it thinner and thinner and then putting the twist in. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, in commercial application, you'll see like woolen spun yarns go into a lot of blankets. Think like military blankets, that, you know, the sort of Pendletons right. of the world. And I think you see more worsted fibers going to like suits and Men's, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Stuff where you want it to look really nice and um, lustrous and smooth. Smooth, um, to right, the and, touch. and 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 compressed. It's a the the the, the fibers are because they've been lined up. Then when they're twisted, they're really packed in tightly. Yeah, and I wish I had a great example. I have a Peg has her fiber spun both woolen and worsted mm -hmm. style, semi worsted, and uh, there's a real big difference. Yes, uh, in is. what happens to the fiber you with the woolen spun. It's just it looks a lot more, um, a lot less lustrous or, or more puffy. like yeah puffy. Puffy, puffy. Uh, it's less smooth to the touch. Like when you're knitting with it, I find I need to yeah. use a little, a lot less tension on it just so it glides. Uh, versus the the worsted spun, it's a little sleeker and it yeah. still has a lot of those warmth because your fiber is. We're so sounding crimpy. biased. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Uh, well, we chose this. We chose our equipment for a reason. Yeah, I think we're allowed to be biased. Yeah. But I also would say some fibers might do better woolen we'll, we'll yeah. spun yeah. versus worsted. So, uh, so hopefully that's made some sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I uh, yeah. You're right. We picked the equipment for a reason. Well, um, I just, yeah. one more note is just why not be a hundred percent worsted? And that is because a comb, a, a big commercial comb takes up a heck of a lot of space. Right. I'm not, I don't know for sure, but I, my understanding was that there was only like a one or maybe a couple in this country right. that can do the combed uh, top. So for a small mill like ours, who is able to process just a small flock's worth of wool, a carter is a much more reasonable piece of equipment right. to house. So yep. that's why semi-worsted. Semi-worsted, not yeah. straight up pure worsted. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's that. Um, we we have a kind of not drum roll exactly, but we have something we want to preview with you guys. Announcement. Announcement. <laughs> announcement. Um, we've been thinking about it for a little while. We've been cooking up the idea of trying to kind of curate some of the yarn that we're making, a combination of both making tracks as well as our farm fresh, in a way that um, if you're not sure you want to try, you'd kind of trust us to curate a box for you. So um, we, we've, got, we've got a name for it. 
You want to share it? No, you go ahead. Okay. We're calling it the mill box because we <laughs> want to make it very clear what this do. We got the mill cast, we got the fiber mill, now we got yeah. the mill box. We got a mill box yep. and it'll be a, a, a quarterly subscription and each um, time you get the box, there'll be three skeins of yarn in it and it could be a combination of farm fresh and making tracks or all farm fresh, but it'll be what we've been working on that we think will be really special. And really work together and yeah. tell kind of a story together yeah. too. And, and as I think you guys know, we only have eight spindles, so when we're spinning um, a, a batch of yarn, it's usually about 10 pounds, and because that's all that, as Amanda said, this is one and a half pounds, we only have eight um, spindles. So uh, there'll be a limited amount of boxes because it will be from a run. So we'll, we'll have 40 boxes um, that we'll do, that we'll, up to 40, that we'll ship out quarterly. The first one's gonna drop on May 1st. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna tell you what's in it yet, but we have plans yep. and um, we think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, so uh, as I'm speaking this, it's not available on our website, but by the time we put this out, you will be able to go to our website. We'll link in the show notes and we're gonna do either a six months uh, subscription or one year. So the six months, you're gonna get two boxes and the one year you'll get four, well, boxes. four boxes. And we hope uh, it's a lot of fun. We, yeah. we are really excited just to be able to uh, you know it's sort of following this sort of csa and we know we're not we're not asking our immediate community and we're not really like a farm or agriculture but everyone is playing around with this csa which will help us know that we have a market for yeah. what we're producing and what we're excited to do and and e e with each box there'll be a, a backstory on on yep. what's why uh you're getting what you're getting in the box and we we think you're gonna have some fun discovering what's in the box. Yeah, so uh, buy a mailbox. Yeah, try buy, out. Uh, yeah, try a subscription to the mailbox. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, speaking of our community, we have a few open houses. Yeah, yeah we, had a, we just had one that was a lot of fun, and we're, we're trying to do them on a monthly basis. So the next one's coming up is on the 24th of March, yep. which already seems like a right around the yeah, corner. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's already, it's the 6th while we're recording today, yeah, so it's yeah. not far. And by then our sheep will be shorn. Yes, How yeah, cool yeah, that? big day. The 18th of March, we're shearing, which will be very we cool. We will be sure to bring you along for the ride. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but anyways, March uh, 24th, it's a Friday, 3 to 5 at yep. the mill. And as well, we're then the following month, in case you're from out of town, you want right, to plan wait, ahead. Some plans, yeah, April 21st. Yep, same um, thing, Also three on to a five. Friday, 3 to 5. And uh, we are last uh, our last open house. What really did well was to have a little, you know, exclusive box of sort of mini skeins yep. and seconds. And we're gonna keep rolling some bargains. Those out. Some bargains. So if you want to, you just need a little bit of yarn, and you happen to be in the area. Yeah, or you want to play with a bunch of colors. We'll have some yep. mini skeins to to be able to do that with. Yeah. Yeah. So come check it out. Yeah. So we're gonna go um, let the sun come in and, and get the mill crank in here. Yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye.